Hi, everybody. Welcome to Video Marketing Success Stories. I'm your host, Andy Glickman, along with Mari Rogo, CEO Hello. and founder of Rip Media Group. How are you doing, Mari? Hey there. Good, good, good. Thank you. Every week, we like to take a look at some projects from the video marketing world, origin, their process, their progress, the things you went through and your company went through to produce them. Maybe learn a little something out of it if you're a company out there that's looking to get into the video marketing industry, just have some video marketing projects for your company. If you're not thinking that your company is a media company at this point, you're already behind. Right. right? You're like, oh, we're a, we're a hardware store. You're a media company. Oh, mm -hmm. we're a bank. You're a media company because, you know, we're in construction. You're a media company. Look at the guy <laughs> yeah. on podcast that he's sitting there like, here's how we, you know, fix a closet door. Dude's got millions of views. He's a yeah. media company. Yeah. But also happens to be. <laughs> or he should be, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you, you can't, how can you exist in this, in this space if you're not at the very least considering video marketing? That's what keeps us aloft. <laughs> may they all, re may they all see the light and realize <laughs> that they need videos and more of them. I wanted to look through the vast RIP Media Group library of videos, the overwhelming <laughs> library for things that catch my eye that we can talk about. I think because it was centered in the music industry and yeah. just screamed rock and roll, which I'm a big fan of, the Line 6 series of yeah. videos that you guys did, which looks so sleek, so clean, so bleeping cool uh <laughs> that i, I really want amplifiers it's it's, 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 but it's like cool. you know so it's live action for those of you not familiar with it we'll, we'll include a link it's live action it's just I, sexy is the only thing i can think i mean you guys treated this amp and this and this equipment as like you know a hot babe lying in a bed you know, it was like <laughs> angles and lighting and close-ups and slow. You know, I, I kind of expected Barry White to bust out at any second. <laughs> I'm curious, obviously, about, and like, I, like we always talk about the origin, how it came about, how you first got to meet them, how it became, hey, this is what we need, and then sort of how you settled on that style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned it's a series because, by the way, and I, you know what, I'm going to see if I can do a screen share here and uh, let's see if we can put this thing up and and I'll show you. All right. Ooh. Yeah, we have some rock and guitar going with mm -hmm. this thing. And you're so true. It's so right. We made this thing a lifestyle. We made that amp a character in this and we actually got a musical group. They helped us find it, of course, but they helped us find this music group. And we found other people that we went through casting that are musicians that use Line 6 guitars. And it was really kind of cool at the time. We were talking to Fender Amp, which my brother's a musician and he always used Fender. And then he started looking at Line 6 and then these guys called. Mm -hmm. So we ended up doing this Line 6. First, it was a video, and then it was a series of video. We did a 30-second version for commercials, a one-minute version for their trade shows, a two-and-a-half-minute version for in-store display, and then a much longer version that included a lot more like how-to. So I think we did four or five and maybe more of those, you know, than there it was. So we just kind of let it play out there. So, so when you hear the music, because it's coming through their own amp, it just sounds really, really great. So how did it come about? The question that you just asked me. So it came about from, actually, this one was a funny one. This one came about through one of the photographers that had done some work for them in the past. So they have a lot of still images and as you can imagine, you know, product shots and things like that. And they really wanted to amp it up, uh, pun intended, mm -hmm. and, you know, show this new product that now, you know, now what, four years later or something, you know, there's Bluetooth amps all over the place, but then it was very new to go without the cord, without the cable. Mm -hmm. So cutting the cord and the product did not exist yet. So that's why we have these product shots that were created out of CAD CAM 3D design models like this one right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the product didn't exist yet. So we created it in the 3D world. You know, they test marketed it and then they came out and became really, really, a, you know, like a big seller, big product. And the musicians, like really, you know, kind of specific musicians really like Line 6 and everybody, you know, every amp, every guitar, every drum set has its own sound. So people really, really love these guys. And they're, uh, they're here in Los Angeles, like outside of Los Angeles mm -hmm. in the suburb. But it was great working with them. They're really cool and creative people. Did they have any other style in mind or that you guys pitched that was part of the consideration? 
They had always worked with is another good question. So other style, you know, like when I go through the styles, there's, you know, there's things like stop motion, right? If you go with live, there's stop motion, there's speed ramp, there's, you know, with actors, without actors, there's, you know, talking head, you know, that kind of thing. And then there's animation, 3D animation, 2D animation, whiteboard animation. So they were thinking more live and lifestyle. They really are a lifestyle product. I mean, you use this thing, it sounds better, you're cool. So they wanted to get cool, hip, my young millennial and younger to kind of represent the brand. So they knew that. I don't think they had started off planning on doing the 3D animation. So that was something that we really, really wanted them to mix in is, you know, kind of throw the product out there, but don't just throw it out there like it's, you know, it's got to be a part of this and so let's show the old product. They incorporated it, like you said, into the story. So all these different things were happening and revolved around the, mm-hmm. the amp. You know, it was like the party happens because the amp's there. And mm-hmm. we literally have a party scene. So we filmed for a whole day, a whole party scene. And in the video you just saw, I think you see it for three, four seconds. Right. And that is one of those funny things about live action. You don't know what pieces you're going to use. You can spend a whole day here and take mm-hmm. a couple of seconds or it could be the whole day. But you go through and you feel it out in post and what really tells the story the best. Yeah, I was going to ask about specifically about the live action production process. There's obviously a lot that goes into it. Like you say, the shoot, you're, you're dealing with the crew. So what kind of considerations, especially as it differs from animation or motion graphics, talk a little bit more about some of the, the, the process that goes into live action shooting and, and production there's a lot, Andy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let me tell you what's the same. So when you go through the process, right, you know, the bidding, beginning process, the pre-production process is probably the most different of them all. What we do is we always start off with the idea factory, which is pitching. We actually listen. We do a discovery session. We listen to the customer. What are their goals? What are they trying to do? What's the call to action? Where do, what, how do they want people to feel? And what do we want them to do? at the end of the video. You know, I want to feel good, but I also want them to click on, let's see a demo or where's the local store that I can check this out or, you know, or click like on Facebook or whatever it might be. So you got to find out those goals. Then we come back and we pitch the concept. Okay, this could be live action and we think it could be funny or this could be sexy or sizzle, which is what we pitched here. Again, I always say this, like sexy doesn't mean like, you know, models, you know, on a boat or something like that. It's just making something you know, that's aspirational, something you really want to be in is, you know, visibly attractive. And, you know, in any way, like I want to be in that car in that convertible, that's sexy and it sizzles, or, you know, it's, you know, sensual and intriguing, you know, that kind of thing. S-T-U-F-F, sexy, touching, unique, funny, and fear, like I always talk about. So we went for the sizzle, you know, in this one. And so we pitched that, they loved the idea. And then you go out about with live action. Of course, now you got to put the, the pieces into place. So we're talking auditions, you know, we're talking locations, dates, you know, how much time in each location, because you're not just in one studio. That's, that's a whole lot easier than going out with this. We were in probably five or six locations across Los Angeles, which is tough to get place to place. I mean, if you're in you know, outside of Milwaukee in a suburb or something like that, you know, I go, all right, we'll get from here to there in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, here it's, we'll get from here to here, which is three miles in an hour and a half, <laughs> right? So, you know, and we're, we don't have helicopters to take us. So it's all consideration. You got to kind of do this bar graph of how much time, how much expense and that kind of thing. So, you know, you go through the auditions, you, you do the casting, you run that past the agency or the customer directly. You go for the locations, location scouts, will this work? What's the lighting like? What's the lighting like at this time of day? Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to be filming all day, the morning to the afternoon to the night, totally different. And you got to keep it static because you got to make it look like all this happened within one minute, even though you're filming across the whole day. So there's so much that goes into live action when you ask a question like that. But once you yeah. lay all that out and you storyboard it, then you go about the production piece, right? So you have all the people in place, producer, director, the director of photography, which is the person that holds the camera, really feels out what's going to be on lens and show that, you know, show that feel that the director has the best, you know, sound people, lighting people, etc. cetera, all, all the way down the line, everybody is critical. Let's say you get everything you shoot, you hope it came out how you hoped or you hoped it comes out better. And then you go to post-production, editing, sound effects, sound design, color correction, you know, deliver. So, opposed to animation where all those things come into play, except for the audition is really an artist creating either a character or a scene. Do you like this feel? Do you like that? 
you know, the location, the same thing. It's all from an artist hand or, you know, from scenes we design and that kind of thing. So in some ways, animation can be easier because you can really see and feel it in the storyboards, you know, and kind of feel it come to life. It's like looking at a comic book and then the comic book comes to life. So there's really, there's great advantages to both. What, what kind of, I'm going to sort of put you on the spot here. What kind of parameters determine your preference for one over the other? Live action versus motion graphics. Is, yeah. it, is it within the story that you want to tell? Is it the, 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 the company, you know, the client itself? Is it just how you feel on a Tuesday? <laughs> so there's, I'm going to give you my, my, a couple of real sort of behind the curtain, you know, things that were going on and why I switched to become more of an animation company than live action. All right. And here is the, I'd say the big one. So the first one always comes from the customer. You know, what kind of brand are they? What are they trying to show? If they're a lifestyle company, you know, consumer-based, B2C, typically lifestyle people, actors, that sort of thing will play a bigger role, right, than, than animation. Not always, but it plays a little bit of a bigger role. If you're B2B, people are a little bit more, you know, they're at work, they're going to watch this, you know, what, how does it represent the product that they're selling, you know, even more so it leans a little bit heavier on animation, but it comes down to what they really want, what that customer is going to open their eyes to. That's the most important thing. We got to disrupt their day and have them watch and pay attention and learn something new. Then it comes to budget. <laughs> do they really have the budget to be able to pull off what we really want to do? And that is the big determining factor between live and animation in some cases. And there isn't an easy rule for, oh, live is going to be more expensive than animation. It's not the case. Mm -hmm. We've done animation projects that are, you know, a hundred and some thousand dollars. I think about a Pixar film. Pixar films are $1 million per minute. 1 million a minute, mm -hmm. right? You know, you can shoot for a whole lot less than that. <laughs> right, right. I, I, I uh, the, so. uh, the Hangover was, you know, the whole movie was $30 million, including Bradley Cooper and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Zach Galifianakis and all those actors in there. So you never know. You do know. You've, you've got to look at budget. But, you know, when these kind of things, people typically have like, you know, ten to 30000 of a budget. So sometimes at the lower end, you'll lean a little heavier on, you know, more motion graphic design and mm -hmm. animation. Higher end, it could be a blend of both. 3D animation, you're, you know, you can be much higher than that in budget. So that's where it goes. And then I'll give you the big thing. What happened to why I started switching from a lot of live to animation was the actors would come in and do fantastically well at the audition. They would crush it. They'd be perfect. They'd have emotion. They knew their lines and they came in, different actors, different actors and actresses, different days, different projects. We've done hundreds, but they wouldn't be prepared. So we'd lose hours of they of them not, you know, not knowing their line, is not being able to communicate well. The other thing, weather. <laughs> you know, what happened all of a sudden, great, it's going to be windy or rainy that day. So now we have to delay everything. And we have, you know, a 10, 15 person crew in some cases have to delay everything. Then you have to go back to the customer and say, I'm sorry, we couldn't get this. Can you, you know, we, but we still have 10,000 in expense because all those people showed up. So all those things, you know, it, that happens. That's, that's, that's what you got to be prepared for. Have a backup actor, have... You know, this and that, just higher and higher expense to really make sure you're going to do it well. And I started toying around, whatever, five or six years ago and said, I don't have those problems and I can be a little closer to home and the family if I go with a little heavier leaning on animation. Mm. And luckily, the market said exactly the same thing. They wanted animation as well. So that's why we're, you know, a little heavier on animation than we are live, but we certainly do both and it really depends on the customer. How big of a crew was that for, for that video that you showed us, that line six, do you recall? But how many yeah. people you had on that? How many people we had there? So in, including, well, let's, let's exclude the actors because each scene that you saw there had different levels of actors. One of the party scene, we had, you know, 15, 20 extras as well as, you know, five or six of band mates, you know, or band outside of that. I mean, if, let me kind of run down the line because I can't remember exactly, but it, you know, we certainly had four folks from the customer, producer, obviously, you know, me, director, director of photography, two people for sound, I think two people for lighting, probably three PAs, production assistants. And I'm not really counting right now, but I'm thinking we're probably about eight or 10. So wherever we traveled around, we we're kind of looking at like 10 to 15 people mm -hmm. plus the actors. Oh, I forgot the grips. Sorry. They're the ones that do all the electric and carry things and, and you know, or, or <laughs> that's 10 to 15 people. And you did it all in one day at different locations, at these different locations. That was actually a two day shoot. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so, that was a two-day you know, shoot at all the different locations. So we went from, you know, the, the kid and his, uh, you know, wasn't really his home and it really wasn't, you know, the, you know, the, a kid, you know, yeah. <laughs> like a 25 year old playing 18, you know, uh-huh. in somebody else's apartment that let us, you know, rent for the day so that we could film, but you know, he was in there jamming on the guitar. So that was probably, that was a half a day. We squeezed in another half a day at the studio. You know, we had about two or three people setting them up over at a sound stage. So they were playing. So when we got there with all the gear and same cameras and the rest of the folks and director, they were pretty much set up. So we actually could put up, pull off two in one day there. And the other day was actually two other. Mm-hmm. It was one short scene in the inside the house and then outside was the party scene. So two days, four or five scenes, if I remember right. Then we mixed wow. in the animation. Mm-hmm. Which well, was, I just, was beautiful. And that took a few weeks yeah. to create on its own. Well, I think what you came away with in the sample you showed and the other line six videos is very cool really stylized, stylistic, interesting to look at. But obviously, as you say with live action, there's a lot of things to take into consideration and a lot of potential pitfalls. So always something to consider for our audience when they're considering some live action shoots, some live action videos. So Mari, do you have any uh, resources you could recommend to our listeners that they can uh, check out either through your website or some other way? Sure, absolutely. There's there's some great resources that we put together out there. So three that come to mind really quick. One is uh, the video bot, T-H-E, video bot, like robot. The video bot helps people make their own videos in seconds. And it's a resource that we've been using really successfully and our customers have been using. So, you know, you want to get back in touch with that cold lead or, you know, the person that hasn't gotten back in touch with you, or you just want to do some outreach. Um, or even wish somebody, you know, happy birthday, happy holidays. There are videos sitting in there waiting for you to personalize and you can literally do it in seconds and send it out. And there is a free, it's free for the first period of time. So that's a great resource. Second, um, if I'll give you a link to this, but this is basically a, um, uh, basically it's called the uh, Create the Salesperson That Never Sleeps. And this was actually compiled from all the frequently asked questions we've had over the years from different customers of ours. So we put all those FAQs together and then turned it into a scorecard and a way to create your own best video marketing message and just marketing messages. So if you go there, you click on it, it's a free download, you know, kind of download this workbook. You know, it's, I think it's six pages, you know, nothing too laborious. You know, it's not going to take you a year to go through, you know, maybe a few minutes or half an hour. And you will have a great roadmap for what you should be setting up as far as your company's best story. So that is uh, creating the salesperson that never sleeps. And then the last thing is, uh, you know, ways to promote your video or your story. There's another link that I could get you. And I believe that infographic is the, the 10 best ways to uh, promote your video and your story. And I'll give you a link there. So those are the three things I can think of quickly. And um, happy to, you know, share more if you hit us up on our website at ripmediagroup.com. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about some of the interesting animation styles that you guys have worked on. You mentioned that before. So I want to talk about a project that you guys have worked on in the past that has some interesting animation. Thank you for joining us on Video Marketing Success Stories. I'm Andy Glickman, your host, with Mari Rogo, CEO and founder of RIP Media Group. If you want more information on RIP Media Group, check them out at ripmediagroup.com. You can see uh, samples of their work and check out their blogs for even more tips. We'll be right back. Thanks. 